Thank you, Disha. Um, we'll now hand it over to Dan Binderman, who took part in the second session, the July session last summer, and he will speak to us about the third part, the functional analysis. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Dan and I am a senior in high school. Um, and yes, yeah, so I'm going to get right into what I did in the bioinformatics pathway and is likely what it will resonate a bit what you will do in uh, if you do pursue this internship. So basically what we were doing is that we were looking at the data collected from the report and comparing the data from cancer cells and normal cells, right? And so we looked at the gene expression levels. And so the genes that were expressed really differently in cancer cells versus these normal cells are what we may um, look at as potentially being significant. Um, okay, so once we have identified these top deregulated genes throughout uh, through using differential gene analysis, we can now give them more applicable biological meaning uh, through functional analysis. And so in this step, we identify the most common cellular processes related to these genes and identify the proteins that these genes actually code for. Okay, yeah, so I don't want to spend too much time going over this slide, but again, it is important to note that uh, some of the external databases that we did use uh, to perform the um, multi, this multi-analysis project. So just with a quick show of hands, ha has anybody here ever heard of the Enrich R, Metascape, or David databases? Let's see if anyone can raise their hand if they have. Yeah, okay, I see one. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, so, uh, yeah, so not many of you have, and that's perfectly fine. When I first did this internship, I had no clue what these databases were. I've never heard of them, and I've never seen these uh, icons, these logos, but as I did this internship, I did start to understand what they were and actually how to use the information that they store um, to do the analysis. So what each of these um, databases do is that they provide a comprehensive gene set enrichment and annotation tools. Um, and so we use the information that they store to do the analysis. So throughout the course of this uh, bioinformatics pipeline, we use many different tools for functional analysis. And the first of which was gene ontology using the enrich uh, geo function in R, the programming language we use. So gene ontology uses a comprehensive model of biological systems to identify the top biological processes and cellular components and cellular functions associated with certain genes. And now while it is important to note that uh, the deregulated genes are not the only indications of how a disease is progressing, the, the imbalance between upregulated genes and downregulated genes, which Disha uh, did talk about, they do help shed some light on the progression of a disease. So as a colorectal cancer, which is the specific disease that we focused on in our um, project, um, so using statistical inferences, we could see that many genes that were more highly expressed in the cancer cells versus the normal cells coded for proteins that had to do with RNA metabolic processes. And now, so let's think, you know, let's go back to the, our high school biology notes and let's see if this actually makes sense. So we know that a characteristic of cancer cells is that they divide uncontrollably, right? And so a big component of DNA replication is that um, is RNA. Either it plays a direct role uh, through RNA primers uh, or indirectly simply by allowing for the um, construction of different proteins that help in DNA replication. So this is what I mean by giving, this is what we mean by giving biological application to our results through functional analysis. We wanna see if it actually makes sense for the upregulated genes to code for RNA metabolic processes. Okay, so the next step of our functional analysis was to use the stream database. And what we hope to get, get out of this database was to identify targetable genes based on protein-protein interactions. Um, so this is again, an, another database that when I entered this internship, I have never heard of, um, but it, it really is fascinating with um, all the um, data that it stores and how applicable that data is for our, um, our project and many other real world projects. Um, so what we did is that we took our top 100 deregulated, uh, dysregulated genes and the string database automatically created a map out of them. And the output was this map that connects these genes based on the proteins that they code for. And it kind of gives us an idea of the protein-protein interactions among these different genes. Um, and now I have a close-up here of a specific gene within this map that the string database uh, created for us. 
and this is the RHOA gene. And so as we see, if we count, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine interactions with other genes. And so this suggests that the RHOA gene, um, the protein it codes for, interacts with many other proteins involved with uh, the progression of colorectal cancer. So maybe RHOA, uh, the RHOA gene could be a target for drug discovery, which we'll talk about uh, more later. Okay, and then the last functional analysis uh, segment that I want to talk about is the enrich R analysis. And that basically allows us to consider transcription factors. Um, and I don't know if you all know what transcription factors are, but they basically regulate uh, the transcription of certain genes um, into eventually producing proteins. Um, so what we see here is the RHOA gene that we were just looking at, which is actually a hub gene because of how many different um, genes it's connected to, it is regulated by this transcription factor right here. Um, so what this suggests, the RHOA gene actually codes for a microtubule organization protein. Um, and because this gene was actually upregulated, meaning that it was more highly expressed in the cancer cells versus the normal cells, um, if we do target the transcription factor and maybe um, somehow use a drug to prevent the expression of this gene, then it will interfere with microtubule organization um, and therefore DNA replication, right? Because uh, if you, uh, if any of you have taken a biology class yet, um, then you know that in metaphase, microtubules, microtubule organization is extremely important. So if maybe we can interfere with that, then this gene, which is highly expressed in colorectal cancer cells, um, may no longer be able to produce as well functioning proteins. Okay, so. Why does this matter? Why are we actually doing this project? Um, so one thing that STEM Away has really emphasized is that it's not just about getting the results. We have to analyze the data that we get and try to actually understand what's going on. How does it conform to what we already understand and what new things does it actually teach us? So, one, so let's think about it through a biological lens again. Genes, as we know, are the fundamental units that dictate bodily functions by coding for proteins. So we can use the functional analysis to see how these proteins are involved in certain pathways that correlate to the progression of, of, the, of a disease such as colorectal cancer. And you guys might in your internship study the progression of a different disease. And so once we identify these pathways, they become potential targets for effective drug discovery. And this could help reduce the effects of the disease, which is ultimately the goal of everyone, right? We want to try to reduce the effects of a disease like colorectal cancer. I just want to say thank you to STEM Away for this really amazing and rich opportunity. Um, I had a great time. and I, really, I can't wait to build off what I learned throughout this internship. And I hope that all of you in the audience will uh, really consider doing this internship. It's, uh, you're going to learn so much. Um, especially working with older uh, students who have more experience.